Good morning. I got I got a uh, pet food on my pants so bear with me what is up and what is good I feel like we hadn't had a sit down in a couple of vlogs now um, so let's catch up guys it has been hectic around here we've been doing um, quite a bit of travel um, you know uh, a couple of trips a couple of you know two hour plus trips in one uh, month is a lot for us so we've been doing some travel but also I have been having just garden nightmares <laughs> Woo! garden nightmares around here um I'm gonna show you the garden and what happened see the water coming in right there and you can see from here where the water has just come under there and eroded and you see the um let me see the pockets of where all my good um topsoil has been washed off and also where i have come to the point where i am just like do i fight the battle to stop the rain and the water or do i do something else to get my garden going for this season and what i'm gonna do is do something else to get my garden going for this season the better place also where um all that composted soil i had bought for the garden has just rinsed off so um i had built the the wall right there to try and stop that water but we just live down a slope you know we're new to this home and i did not know just the intensity of the drainage that flows through this house from the neighborhood um there is a storm drain that pops out down there but i thought most of the water would be diverted to that but a great majority of it flows under my fence and right through my garden where i tilled and that was a total disappointment it was it actually it just had me thrown off for a hot minute because i bought i bought the tiller i bought um uh, bought compost to go on the soil tilled it in but the compost is still lighter than the clay soil so when the rain came all the compost all the compost washed off the soil I'm left with just a sandy clay bed and the onions that I planted in the lower raised beds got washed out in this storm. They didn't really get washed out, but I mean a great majority of the soil swept by, so I have to replace the soil down there also. What I'm going to do is focus on my balcony garden beds, my raised garden beds that are on the balcony, and we'll see if I decide to work down there. Uh, right now, I just... Uh, it just it was so much work doing what I did I just can't see putting more work and money into it but uh, I kind of have an idea of how I could redeem that garden area but y'all it was just when I t <laughs> 
when I tell you it was a mess, it was a mess. I couldn't even believe it. I could not believe how much water was flowing through there, you guys. But anyway, let's get started. I want to show y'all these seeds that I started and how that's going. Uh, it ain't going well, but I'm going to show them to you. So these seeds, as you can tell, are doing really poorly. These right here, I think, are like scallop squash. This was supposed to have been a watermelon. These were lemon boy cucumbers. These are tomatoes, which look all right. And I don't know what that was, but it's pitiful. This is the first year I've ever done seed starting and I was just grossly unprepared. Aside from just buying the seed starting soil, the lighter, you see how light that soil is, it basically just blows away. Besides just buying the seed starting soil, I had no clue of how to start seeds. I didn't even realize the different germination rates of seeds. And guys, I've been gardening for years. I've been gardening for at least 10 years, but I never started from seed. So, I watched another YouTuber and I will leave her in the description box below, but I realized that seeds have different germination rates, which it says on the back of the package, but it never really dawned on me because anytime I would, I usually would only do sunflower seeds outside and those, you kind of set them and forget them. You know, I, I water them occasionally, you know, they're pretty much a weed, so a weed, so they grow, you know, by themselves. But seeds have different germination rates and I planted seeds with different germination rates in the same seed starting box. And I use the box because I, I love recycling and um, just repurposing materials. But really I needed to invest in some good seed starting trays for the level of what I was trying to do. And um, what I learned from the YouTube video is it's best to water the seeds from the bottom up. So you buy seed starting trays that have the slits in them and then there's a tray that comes with them that goes under it and you put the water in the tray and then the soil sucks the, the and the roots suck the water up from below instead of watering above. I didn't do that and it just kind of devastated. So on this side, you can see I took all those sprouts that I showed you came from this side. I just took them out put them in smaller pots um, because this was collecting gnats in the house and I was just sick of it and I brought it out. The temperature is not quite stable for these seeds either because in that YouTube video I learned that some seeds need to be on a seed heat mat. I do have a seed heat mat for um, our pet hermit crabs but I just didn't know so it's a little late you know. Next year I think what I'm going to do is invest in a real seed starting setup. For this year, however, I'm going to put the majority of my efforts into my patio gardening, some garden starts from Azure Standard. Yeah, so let's zoom in and take a look at what's going on in this box, which is absolutely nothing. All those plants right there came from this side of this box, so it's pretty much emptied out. There's nothing else popping up. I had some little sprouts popping up and then they died off. And this was, uh, what is this? Indigo rose, tomato, and lavender. So the lavender definitely never popped up. And the indigo rose tomatoes didn't pop up either. This box right here, I also harvested a bunch of the little sprouts out of there. And this was uh supposed to be ar uh, artichoke and asparagus bean um those aren't doing well and then i have some things still growing uh the middle was all kale that did not do well but i uh, i have had success so i'll probably just direct sow the kale my um tower garden and then um the gourd never popped up the pumpkin hadn't popped up and the watermelon down here is looking pitiful but i'm thinking it's because it's just not warm enough for those so oh wait as I say that, there's one. Let's see if you can see it. You see it? So there's one of, that's a pumpkin. So maybe it'll live. We'll see. This is my tower garden. And um, they were having a good sale on these. I don't think they're having them anymore. That was how I got drawn to that YouTuber's page. Because she had a code for this tower garden. Now I'm going to be honest with you. Last year I did not have a a uh, good experience with this tower garden i couldn't get anything to grow this year i went ahead and said you know what i'm gonna try it again 
and I'm gonna put some really good soil in it and give it a try. I love using Fox Farm soil. This is the happy frog kind, but I use the Fox Farm Ocean Blend. Now this stuff for this size bag is $20. I went to handy dandy Costco and got this gigantic size bag for $7 and some change. So, um, yeah, I probably will uh, not be filling these completely up with the half with the Fox farm, but I will fill them the majority up with the miracle grow organic and then just add some Fox farm on top with some worm castings that I also bought. I didn't fill this bed all the way up to the top and this does have the more expensive Fox Farm soil and some soil I went and got from the Home Depot because I was just pressed. These beans were not looking good. Uh, they need to be watered now. That's why they're a bit wilty, but they were not looking good. I had them in the box also, the box starter, and they just weren't looking good. So I wanted to get them out here quickly, but I ended up spending probably $30 in soil when I could have went to Costco and these were on sale $2 off. So they were $7 and like 60 something cent for two big bags. I mean, just it, incredible value. So $30 versus I'm going to be able to fill that one and that one up for right around $16. Bush beans. And my goal for this year is to I'm trying to get this out of y'all's face so you can see my goal for this year is to plant enough bush beans so that I can freeze them so that I don't have to buy green beans for the remainder of the year y'all know that groceries are getting super expensive and this is my way of offsetting grocery costs these I did grow from seed they popped up like this that's why the rest of that seed is kind of annoying me because these popped up quick but their germination rate is just like eight days or something so let's get these some water so I like to collect rainwater. I know it looks like a more difficult way to do it rather than going to the faucet and getting water and putting it in a, a regular waterer. It is, it definitely is, but I try to use the garden as a workout tool also. So the more things I lift, um, it's just a good workout for me. Oh, something else I wanted to share with you guys. I got a citrus tree. This is a Calmondin tree, or is it a Calmodin? Calamondin tree. And it produces these little Calma Calamondin fruits that are um, tart. They're like a, a tart lemon type fruit. They have a really delicate skin, but this tree should produce all year long. So we'll see how that goes. All right, let's get to work. Let's get these beds full. Beds are Keter beds, by the way, and you can find them at Sam's Club and Costco, I believe, but I paid $30 per bed. Check your Walmart. Um, when you go in Walmart, look out in the garden section, the outer part of the garden section, you will see these beds, they will look in terrible condition because they're from last year so like the label of what they were there was no label there was nothing when you lift this up because it has a bottom to it let me see if i can lift it when you lift the bottom up um i'll show you okay when you lift the bottom up these are meant so that your roots don't get root rot rot root rot wow um, so the water drains down and then there's a drain plug right there on the side but this little handy dandy thing pops up and tells you what water level you're at but and all the parts are just underneath this right here so when you go if you see these they don't have a label they'll just be kind of discarded they might have pollen in them or dirt they'll look terrible but they are on clearance I paid thirty dollars a piece at your Walmart ask what they have a mark down to at my Walmart, my first bed with the with the bush beans in it, that one was marked down to like $86. But then I got on YouTube and one of my other favorite YouTubers, she found these same exact beds for 30 bucks at her Walmart. So I went to my, to my Walmart, I got these two beds, I went to customer service, I asked them about um, price matching the get your price matched um, because these at sam's or costco are 150 dollars a piece so 30 dollars was a steal and they're brand new love the smell of garden soil oh my gosh okay i don't want to bend this so i am going to do i think i'm still going to add potting soil to this 
because this is a garden soil and garden soil is just it's heavier um, it is a it is for a raised bed but still it's it's heavier than what I would like to be in here so I'm gonna mix it with potting soil and perlite or if I have perlite I might just mix it myself and perlite will make it uh, easier to drain this one has potting soil and the white stuff that you see is the perlite and perlite just aids in aeration of the soil and soil drainage let's get these mixed and this is organic soil I'm, trying, I'm wanting to do organic soil. One thing about the Fox Farm is it is not organic, but the I love, I use my hands. Um, if you're one of the, if you're squeamish and you don't like your hands getting dirty, you might want to skip through this, but I love the smell of soil and I love the soil on my hands. But um, the Fox Farm is not organic. And that's something that I don't like about it, but it has a, uh, it has the worm castings already in it, and it actually has bat guano in it. And if you just research bat guano, it is just like a super, super uh, fertilizer. Some good stuff. I'll probably still amend these beds, especially when I plant tomato, while I have dirty gardeny fingers. Let's talk about the Dora pen. Okay, so <laughs> the thing about having quail is quail stink their feces stinks and it has been a challenge with the sand guys i have gone through a hundred pounds of sand um with these guys so i wound up making some improvements to the cage and i'll show you what i did i had to put some small wood strips that i actually found in lowe's i went to go buy something and um, they have these wood strips that they use to separate larger pieces of lumber. And so if you grab a couple, no big deal. They're like, whatever, take them because they're just trash and people are slipping on them. But um, I use that to reinforce the back so that I wasn't losing so much sand. But still, if it rains, the sand gets mucky and nasty. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to end up um, sucking all this sand out with the shop vac. And I'm going to do just sand on this side. And the rest of this, I think I'm going to use wood chips and see how that goes. And I'm going to use some coop and compost to um, keep the, the smell down um, because I don't want the smell, but also I don't want the flies with the smell. They haven't started laying yet, but that's my fault because I haven't had them on the appropriate um, protein diet. I have them on a, uh, on a chicken food, a, a hen food, and they're not poultry they're game birds and so they need 28 to 30 percent protein and uh, they'll start laying for me we just go out in the yard and earthworms are a plenty good morning you guys it's the next morning and i went and got some supplies i went and got well that's to plant this tree i went and got the perlite for our bed i wound up having to cover the bed up because it got down to like 40 and I didn't want to take any chances with um, a possible frost. And I got some wood chips to go in the Dora pen. going to get this sand out of here and put these flakes in. I am so sick of this sand. I couldn't take it anymore and I decided to go ahead and make the change.
main problem with the sand is it is just heavy and when it gets wet it's not going to dry because the base of this is wood so it's not like there's ventilation to come up and dry it and it just stays soaking soggy wet and it just turns into like i the only word i can think of is a cesspool and then lifting wet sand the sand is already a 50 pound bag and then you lift it and add water to it it is cold out here this morning but i'm going to go ahead and mix this perlite in with this soil and that way i can use the um raised bed garden soil and not have to um buy the i might still get some potting soil but this will just completely make sure that this soil is really light shopper I was not a Walmart shopper but I am going in Walmart and Walmart has so much overstock that things just get lost in the sauce this pot was one of them just like my garden beds that were from last year's stock um, they look a little dinged up or whatever but they work perfectly fine this pot was the same I got this pot for $5.98 Y'all, we got a lot done today. We got this Dora pen all hooked up. I don't know if you can see her all nested nicely back there. Everything is nice and clean. We got these sprouts that are hanging on by a thread out here. We got this dirt hooked up and ready. These beans look all right, even after being covered. And we got this Calmondon tree potted up nice and beautifully. Thank you for joining me today. If you liked what you saw, please be sure to like. And if you really liked it, hey, go ahead and share it. Let's grow our little community. Thank you again and see you next time.